little joke, Mr. Horse. Think it's been all said, huh? Pretty quick now. Just think, three week, no pot, no pan, nobody late for meal. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're gonna be cooking for yourself, ain't you? Hopsing like somebody appreciate hopsing cooking. He's got a point. No, that ain't exactly what I meant. I mean, you're gonna have to be washing pans and pots and dishes and all that anyhow, ain't you? Only a hopsing pan. <laughs> Gold pan, too. Don't have to wash gold pan. Only wash to the gold. <laughs> I'm saying you're just wasting your time. All you're going to do is end up with a handful of blisters. And believe me, you're talking to the blister king of Nevada. <laughs> Maybe you look in wrong place. Now, wait a minute, Hop Singh. You may be the best cook in Nevada, but you know miner. You don't know where to find gold. Hop Singh, look where people find gold. Many mine in Millico Creek. Oh. I'm saying them old mines have been mined out years ago. It's just wasting your time prospecting down there. Maybe so. Many men, if they turn one more shovel of dirt, they find gold again. Hop Singh going to turn one more shovel full of dirt. Good luck. Thank you. Come on. Huh. You do all the eating. It's a minor name, Hop Sing. Gonna die, go. May become a blister king. Wrong. Hop Singh not only miner on Miracle Creek. Here, boy.
Hello, little friend. Hop's a good cook, huh? Huh? <laughs> Good morning, Missy. My name Hop Singh. What your name? I live on Ponderosa. Where you live? Ponderosa is the biggest ranch in Nevada. Maybe biggest in whole United States. Hop Singh number one cook on Ponderosa. Best cook in Nevada. Hop Singh minor too. Hello, little friend. Hello. Missy? No need be afraid. You're welcome. Ah, yes, I seen far. Ah, yes, I seen far. Luke, no like Chinese song? No hurt, hop sing feeling. <laughs> hop sing no like your song either. Leaf make very good boat. In China, Hop Sing sell many leaf boats. Ah, yes, I sing for. Time to wash up, Missy. Supper pretty quick. Oh, no, 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 Missy. You soap. Wash your neck, wash ear. For you. Hop Sing fix supper pretty quick. cook today. <laughs> Even champion cook make mess. <laughs> Eat before the supper get cold, Missy. <laughs>
thank you for bucket. to see you. Come. Come. Sit down. Eat supper before it get cold. Oh, oh, not so fast. You swallow too fast, you'll not get taste of good food. Hapsing live on Ponderosa. Where you live? Why you not talk to Hapsing? Where you live before you come here? You have pretty locket. Where you get it? What's your name? Missy. <laughs> Missy? Missy what? Just Missy. <laughs> Just Missy? by fire. Keep warm. More coffee, Missy? No, more. Hopsing. What kind of a name is that? Chinese name. What's Chinese? Hopsing. Me Chinese. Hapsing come from China, across the ocean, long time ago. What's the ocean? Ocean is uh, water, salt water, far, far away. China is a big country, very big. Hapsing get on sailing ship in China. Very high mass. Many sail. China boys sleep below. Ocean very rough. Ship make it very hot. Hapsing get very sick. In the morning, Hapsing go on deck. See nothing but water. Far as can see. One whole month. Water, water, water. Hop 
Hop Sing is China Boy. China Boy? Chinese? All the same. Hop Sing come on Asia Queen. Long, long time ago. You come here all alone. Why? <laughs> Hop Sing, number one cook on Ponderosa. Every year, number one cook get time off after long up. Last three year, Hop Sing lose money in Fantan House. This year, Hop Sing go prospecting. Number one cook. Number one cook burn meat. <laughs> number one time. <laughs> <laughs> well, where's your wife? Hop Sing not marry. Why? Hop Sing China boy. Been here long time. Never have seen one Chinese girl. You know, Missy, until now, you very hard to talk to. Just like try to catch moonbeam in the hand. Trying to catch a moonbeam in your hand. Oh. That's pretty hot, Sam. Good morning, Missy. Morning. No. You soak like you tell me. <laughs> Missy, right. Hop sing forget. Wash behind your ears and your neck hard. Why'd you make mud? Mud? You know, with the pan and the dirt. Oh. That's for gold. Like your locket. Hop Singh wash dirt away. Go is heavy. Sink to bottom of pan. Dirt all wash away. Go is on bottom. Ah. Oh. Not every time, though. <laughs> That's pretty burn. Blue Jay. Why? Why what? Why Blue Jay? That's his name. Blue Jay, like my name, Hop Sing. Like my name, Missy. Missy what? Just Missy. Blue Jay's gone. I'm gonna go find him. You wash good. This sure is good. Got any more eggs? Eggs all gone. You gonna make flapjacks? Flour all gone yesterday. Meat gone, bacon gone, everything gone. Well, I guess only thing to do, I go back Ponderosa, get more grub. You gonna go? You're gonna leave me? I promise you. I not go long time. I'll be back soon.
Something, Father Missy? Why are you so sad? You're gonna leave and never come back. Hopsing, come back real quick. That ironclad promise. Next time you come with me to Ponderosa, meet Mr. Ben Cartwright. He number one boss. He'd be very glad to see you. <laughs> you don't worry, me. Missy. Missy? Missy! Biscuits, 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 biscuits. And what are you making up? Oh, I'm making some biscuits. Oh, I can hardly wait. I don't know how to make them. It's just that I want to see how these other fellows do it. Oh, sure. You'd be surprised how many kind of biscuits there are. There's oh. drop biscuits and riddle biscuits and all sorts drop of... Drop biscuits? Must be like those pancakes you made this morning. You drop one and it breaks the plate. Oh, I admit it. Them was a little tough, but I ate my best that early in the morning. Mm. A cup of flour, milk. Did you hear that? <laughs> huh? What? I heard noise in the store. Eh, it's probably a mouse. Did you measure any of that stuff? Oh, I just put it in there and it gets thick. Oh. Yeah, now let's see. Two teaspoons of tater. Tater rat. Tater rat? Tater What the deuce is tater rat? Yeah, that's an awful big mouse. I need to take a look. Hey, I'm saying, come on in. Hello, little Joe. Good to see you. What are you doing back so early? I come back for some more club. Hey, Hop Singh, am I glad to see you? Hop Singh, not glad to see messy kitchen. <laughs> them dishes, I was going to clean them up later. But hey, how about while you're here fixing some biscuits and some fried chicken and green gravy and some of that good stuff, huh? Where Mr. Cartwright? He's from Virginia City. Yeah, the food's better there. Little Joe, here is a list of things Hobson take from storehouse. You take out of my pay when I come back. Well, I thought you took enough stuff to last you for three weeks first time. Enough for one, not for two. Hey, you found another prospector, huh? Oh, meet very special friend. Yeah, have you found any gold? Oh, gold. Oh. Hey, 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 that's wow. not bad, you know. Hey, look at that. Wow. It's not too bad. Better than losing pay at the Bantan house. <laughs> Good stuff, yeah. Hey, how about a couple of pies while you're here? Huh? Hobson got to go now. I see you when I come back. Yeah, All right, good luck. One pie? Hey, Dad, burn it. I want to ask him while he is here about that tater rate. Tartar rate. Tartar rate. All you had to do is just take a look in the baking powder can. Baking powder? Uh huh. How'd you know that? I looked it up in your cookbook. It's right there. Yeah. I found it the other day when I was finding out how the other fellows make biscuits. Yeah? Bacon powder. <laughs> what do you know about that? Two teaspoons. Very good. Two teaspoons. <laughs> 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 I didn't think he'd come back. Hop Singh promised, Missy, it'd be quick trip. If Hop Singh not come back, where Missy go? Some other place. Where you come from before you come here? Yonder side of the hill. It's a long way from here. You have a family? Yeah. How many? Mom, Pa. Family not know where Missy is? Missy run away. Why? I didn't run away. I just took a long walk. Why? China boy leave China. Why? To see new place? <laughs> but we talk about Missy now, not Hop Singh. When does he go home? I don't want to go home. I want to stay here. I like it here. Hop saying like it here, too. Like, not like, no matter. Ten more day vacation over. I have to go back to Ponderosa. 
become number one cook. Burn meat. <laughs> Not burn meat. Just cook very well done. <laughs> Missy talk pretty good now. Maybe so pretty quick. Missy talk as good as Hop Sing. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> Here. Wash. Not just hand, not just face. All over. Put on clean clothes. You understand? Oh, yeah. Why me she chose someone? Missy, very pretty. <sighs> Missy's a China girl now. Hop Singh's got a China girl wife. Hop Singh's got Missy. No, 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 no. Hobson give up prospecting. Hobson going to be married. Married? Surprise, huh? Oh, oh yes, I certainly am. Hobson, very happy man. After marry, Hobson no longer lonely. Wait, 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 where are you going? Hobson have to go tell Mr. Horse a little joke. Wait, wait, come, come on, Jake. Wait, wait a minute now. Who, who, who's the girl? I mean, where'd you meet her? Miracle Creek. At the mine. She a pretty girl. You like her. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I would. I, I, um, when do I get to meet her? Right now. As soon as you get out of chair and come outside. Because Missy wants to meet honorable number one boss of Ponderosa. <laughs> Missy. 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 <laughs> Missy, Hop seems afraid like maybe you run away again. Come, I want you to meet Mr. Ben Cartwright. Number one for us. Mr. Cartwright, this is Missy, pride to be. Well, you see? Shake hand with boss. How do you do? How do you do? Just like I say, you see, very pretty girl. Yes, she's a very pretty girl, Hop Singer. Well, no point in standing outside. Why don't we go inside the house? <laughs> Missy, not talk much to stranger. By and by, she know you better. She chatter like a blue jay. <laughs> I've been to Miracle Creek many times. I never met anyone there by the name of Hamilton. Has your family lived there a long time? Not Miracle Creek. On the other side of the mountain. Oh, I see. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll see how Hop Singh is coming along with the coffee. Coffee ready in a minute. Good. Horse track. Empty cookie jar. Mr. Horse been here. Oh, I'm saying, uh, you haven't met uh, Missy's people. I mean, you don't know them. No people, just Missy. She was, uh, she was alone when you met her. All alone, very hungry. After wedding, Missy helped Hop sing in kitchen. You get two cook for the price of one. Big bargain. Is that what Missy wants? Yes, just what Missy wants. Excuse me. Oh. oh, 
wash a pot, no boil. Don't wash it, it boil over. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Missy like Ponderosa. Uh, we have coffee, and then we go for Virginia City. Then we get license, then we get married. <clears throat> I'm saying, um, it, it may not be quite as simple as that. You see, there are laws regulating marriages, and uh, well, the license uh, may be a problem. Oh, why problem? Hop saying man, missy woman. It's a little more complicated than that. See, the, uh, well, yours would be a, an interracial marriage, Chinese, Caucasian. Well, the law specifically prohibits such marriages. You make joke. Mr. Carlright, you make joke. I'm afraid it's true, Hop Singh. Why? Hop Singh good as any ranch hand. Ranch hand get married? Why not help sing? The law forbids it. Why they pass law against help sing? Well, it's not against you or Missy. It's against all interracial marriages. Mr. Cartwright, you ever make mistake? Yes, I've made my share. Then maybe you made mistake about law. You lend us buckboard. We go to Virginia City. We see lawyer. We find out. Well, I think you ought to do that, but I don't think you should take Missy with you. You keep buckboard. We walk. No, take the buckboard. I'll, I'll write a note to Judge Hill for you. Don't need note. Hop saying no, Judge Hill. the mine. Must talk to Judge Missy. No reason to be afraid. Can have a seat, please? Be a little while, Missy. Pretty soon, everything fine. is very clear. Interracial marriage between Caucasians and Chinese is prohibited by law. You mean we no can get license? You cannot. Up Singh, I've known you for a long time. As Ben Cartwright's guest, I've eaten many of your fine meals. Believe me, I don't want you to get into trouble. You've got to give this up. Hop saying no give up. We get married without license. Chinese marriage. That's not a wise idea. If you get married in the United States, you'll both go to prison. 
Missy, too? Missy, too. I'm sorry, Hop Singh. Someday, maybe the laws will be changed. Change in time to help Hop Singh and Missy? Hop Singh no care about law. Hop Singh find a way. Come, Missy. Come, Missy. Sam. That coolie was chasing a white girl. Hop sing you. Ben, you want to press charges? Sam, you and you, I don't want to see any more now. Get it gone. That clear enough for the rest of you? Oh, move! Missy! Missy gone. Come on, we'll try and find her. No. Hop saying find Missy one time. Hop saying find Missy again. Mr. Cartwright, you lend me money for a pack outfit? Sure. Glad to see you. Oh, I'm glad to Sit see you. Sit down. Hop Singh, fix you some supper. No, I'm not hungry. Are you hurt? No, Hop Singh, fine. Oh. Oh. Hello, little friend. In your city. Very bad idea. So many people. Always people. Some not too very good. I still want to be your wife. You hear what judge say. We get married. We go to jail. Well, we could go to China and get married. 
We could go to China, cross a big ocean, and we could get married. Maybe so. Sell the horse, take stage to Sacramento, boat to San Francisco. Hobson can work for cousin in San Francisco. Earn enough money to buy ticket, go to China. Sacramento? San Francisco? Very big. Many people, just like Virginia City. China, big place too. Many people, everywhere. Chinese people, I like Hop Sing. Some, some like men in Virginia City. People same everywhere. Some good, some bad. Well, maybe it wouldn't be better not go away. Maybe we better stay here. Missy, people come here. Maybe not for a long while. Maybe next minute. Well, when they come, we just hide. We no can hide like little friend in hole. Missy take long walk, find this place. Maybe now, time for Missy to take long walk home to Mama, Papa. Yeah, you come with me. You have no trouble find this place from Virginia City. No trouble. You can find way home. Yeah. You come. You come. No. Number one cook belong at Ponderosa. No other place. Hopsing saddle horses. Time for Missy to go home. No want Missy here. Go home. Go home. <laughs> Go home. Go on. Apple pie, fried chicken for Mr. Horse, angel cake for little Joe, mashed potato for Jamie. And what can I do for number one boss of Ponderosa? Just a cup of your good coffee. Cup in cupboard, coffee on stove. Help yourself. You know, it won't do much good, but... I just want you to know how sorry we all are. Why sorry? Missy gone home? Hopsing back at Ponderosa? No law broken? Oh, Mr. Hoss, hot biscuit. 
Missy happy, Hop Sing happy, then people and law spoil everything. Not first time Hop Sing been kicked and punched. For Hop Sing, it's a no matter. For Missy, it's very bad. Missy say she want to stay. Hop Sing tell her go home. Hopsing say, he no want her here. Hopsing, very big liar. So me and little Joe put up $500 and bought ourselves two-thirds of a going enterprise. $500? That's right. And Greeley's going to run the place for us. Yeah, and all we got to do is just sit back and collect two-thirds of the profit. <laughs> How long have you two been in this little business? About four weeks. And this is the first you tell me about. What's the first time we saw it? We didn't want to spoil everything. Yeah, and we wanted you to see it too, Paul. Well, I know a little bit about the cattle business and horse business and lumber, but I'm afraid saloons aren't in my line. Mr. Greeley says it's going to be a regular gold man. Just look at the business they're doing there. All right, let's take a look inside. Yeah. Here we take the horses. Howdy. Oh, H. Turner? I thought you said the man's name was Greeley. Old man Greeley? Oh, his place is down the street, hon. Thank you. Trails End. Certainly well named. Heavens. Oh, boy. Coal mine. You sure Greeley didn't say coal mine? Oh, you can't judge a place on first impression. Well, how many impressions do you need? Jamie. Jamie. Um, Jamie, why don't you wait for us outside? There's no place for you to be. Well, I, I was just taking a look. I said, hey, Jamie, go and do like Paul says. Ain't fitting a boy your age to be gawking at fancy women. Hoss. Yeah? We made a mistake. Joe, you ain't even given it a half a chance yet. <sighs> Customers? <laughs> oh, you're Mr. Greeley. Greeley, no. No, no, sirs. I, sirs. I'm Darius Dalrymple, your bartender and servant. Sure, sure you wouldn't like a drink, gentlemen? No. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, it's marvelous. <laughs> I buy it over at the Golden Spurs Saloon. 25 cents a shot, straight whiskey. Good stuff. You sure you don't want any? Uh, no, where is Mr. Greeley? Oh, he's, he's over at Snedeker's. That's the funeral parlor. What's he doing at the funeral parlor? He's a client. Boys, uh, look, uh, you take my advice right now. You get rid of this place immediately. Understand? Yes, sir. And the moment you do, meet us in Carson City. Yeah. Paul, uh, best of luck with Miss Frost. I don't think you're going to need it, but... Well, good luck to you, too. I'm afraid you will. Hey. You're Mr. Greeley's partners. Well, you, you mustn't sell. You, you mustn't. Why not? Well, you can make yourself a tidy profit from this establishment. Might be the only thing tidy in this place. Excuse me, my customer. Howdy, partner. <laughs> oh, <laughs> French, French, you don't speak English. <laughs> you speak French? Not so as you can notice it, no. See, I told you, you can make yourself a tidy profit from this establishment. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's 15 cents. You told me you paid 25 cents a shot for the whiskey. 
You know, that's all French you can afford. Oh. Hey, seeing as how you're Greeley's partners and all, don't you think we should go over and pay our last respects to poor Jebediah? And maybe I'll tell you something about Trail's End. Maybe. Oh, I think I know everything about Trail's End I need to. Uh, wait a minute, little brother. Maybe we ought to go over and pay our last respects to our ex-partner. Huh? What about him? Huh? Oh, he's all set. He only buys the one drink. Good, all we can lose is a dime. Hmm. Rest in peace, Shebediah. You know, I was all he had in the world. Poor and neglected soul. Speaking of neglect, Mr. Snedeker, Mr. Snedeker, I strongly object to Mr. Greeley being stashed away in a back room like, like a floor mop. Well, I'm certainly not going to put a saloon keeper in my front parlor. Well, you got Reuben Lucas out front, and Jebediah is just as good a man as Lucas. He's just as dead. I'm sure you understand my position. I'm president of the local temperance league. Mm. I trust you're in sympathy with the anti-saloon movement. Well, we, uh, we try to see both sides of it. <laughs> Mrs. Lucas, you must be brave. Mrs. Lucas runs the boarding house. Two dollars a day in advance, dinners at six. <laughs> Young lady, <clears throat> young lady, contain yourself. I can't help it. I loved him so much. Who are you, girl? I'm his daughter. Who are you? Well, I guess I'm your mother, seeing as how this is my husband laid out here. Now, 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 there must be some explanation. What's your name, young lady? Ellen Sue Greeley. An innocent case of mistaken identity. Oh. This way, oh. Miss Greeley, and my condolences. Greeley's daughter? Jebediah never said nothing about having a daughter. Don't you think it's kind of strange she doesn't recognize her own father? Oh, no, it, it happens all the time. When a loved one passes away, the survivor sometimes goes into shock. Grief unhinges the mourner's mind. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Besides, they all sort of look alike once they're in the box. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Cartwright, may I call you by your first name? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, Joe. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, I'm about to impart something to you that I've never breathed to another living soul. There, 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 my dear. You must be brave now. Oh, I'll be all right. I have to be. I intend to operate my father's salute. Well, of course you will. He, he, he would have wanted it that way. Told me so many times. This place is kind of a mess right now. You, you, you got a nice place to stay? I've checked into the boarding house. My boarding house? What do you think, Joe? Do you think Ellen Sue could make a go up? Oh, what? We got one customer and we lose 10 cents every time he comes in. Oh, come on, be serious. I mean, she's all alone in the world. I think we ought to give her a chance. Yeah, I'll drink to that. I figured you would. Are you gonna, you're gonna tell her to keep me on? Why not? Gentlemen, may I say... May I say that there has not been a finer display of generosity towards one's fellow man since old Abe delivered his second inaugural address. No, no, sir. That's... Oh, welcome to Trails End, Miss Greeley. Oh, so this is my poor dear daddy's place. Uh, Miss Greeley, uh, congratulations. We're going to let you run this saloon. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm so delighted. And you know what? I come with the place. Not much help, but it's hard running a saloon. Oh, well, we Greeley's are used to hard work. Back in Boston. Boston? I thought your pa was from Philadelphia. Phil back in Philadelphia, yes. We, we learned how to work hard. How long did you live in Philadelphia? Oh, five, six. Fourteen years. Fourteen years, right. And I was just a small thing then, but I can remember my mama saying, Jeremiah, she said, we really ought to move out west. 
for what I say. Well, we thought your pa's name was Jebediah. Well, of course, but we had this little joke. You see, when I was small, I couldn't pronounce Jebediah, so we called him Jeremiah, and you don't believe a word of this, do you? No. No. I didn't think so. Okay. And I want you to tell us what you're up to, huh? Uh, I don't know. Somebody hired me to pose as what's his name? Greeley's daughter. Who? I don't know that either. I never met him. Honest. Would I lie to you? <laughs> I think you better tell us the whole story. Well, my real name is Ellen Sue Carpenter, and this man I never met before sent me this letter of instructions. Where did you meet this contact in the first place? Uh, through the Tustin Flats jail. Ah, uh, this fellow was in jail, huh? No, I was in jail. You see, I was selling bottled water and calling it the Fountain of Youth of Tustin Flats. Told everybody I was 100 years old. Don't laugh, I was doing just fine until... One day, something, somebody happened to say something about the 49 gold rush, and I wasn't thinking, and I said that was before my time. I'm always doing dumb things like that. Why would anybody want you to pretend that you were Greeley's daughter? I, I wasn't told. The letter just said I would get a big cash bonus if I could just do it right. Somebody's after Trail's End, that's what. Yeah, I suppose so, because the letter of instructions said that I was to be sure to say I wanted to take over the saloon. Why? Well, whoever this party is figures they can get it for nothing, that's why. I think it's a fair price. Well, whoever this mysterious party is, if they want to go to all this trouble to get it, maybe they put up some money. I think we can smoke them out, little Joe. Tustin Fly's not that far away. Let's give it a try. Let's go. That's for you, young lady. I know, I know. Back to jail. No, we're not going to prosecute. Just go and con no more. Jerry? Yeah? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm about to impart a secret to you that I have never breathed to another living soul. Oh, I, I wonder if you could breathe it from a little farther back. But, but first, you got to agree that we're partners. I, I mean, word of honor. But you got it. <laughs> You know, you, you seem like a very enterprising young lady. <laughs> if you could get your hands on $500, buy out the Cartwrights, yeah. I'll split the Greeley fortune with you. Why don't we split the fortune first, and then I'll buy them out? Well, I haven't found it. <laughs> you know, I know what you're thinking. This man's a drunk. You're right. That's right. That's exactly Ms. what I was saying. Carpenter, thinking. This may, may I call you Ellen Sue? Thank you. Miss Carpenter? Old Jebediah, he hid a fortune here someplace, and I'm going to find it. You see, your father, bless his gentle memory. He wasn't my father. Well, that's good. You wouldn't have liked him. Mean old codger. Loved to torment a person, you know? He, he kept giving me those devilish hints about the loot. He said, keep, keep searching, Darius. Keep looking. It's, it's close enough to spit at. He never flat out said where it was. He just, just, he just torment me with them hints. Little by little, I'm remembering. Yes, sir, every every day I I recollect a bit more. And one day, when I when I put it all together, Eureka! What's a Eureka? It means I've found it. Which you haven't. And which you won't, because there really isn't any money. There never is, I know. No, 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 you're, you're, you're wrong. You're wrong, miss. No. You're wrong. If you could get your hands on $500. I don't have $5. As a matter of fact, I was sort of counting on maybe you would loan me some money to pay my board and stage fare out of here. Me? About $50. <laughs> 40 <laughs> 30 I don't have a penny. <laughs> Listen, I mean, if you, you're in a hurry to catch a stage... Out of here, Warren. Haven't you got anything you can sell? Uh-huh. Our secret. Oh, I know a lot of people would pay high money for information like that. Oh. Hey, that's, that, that's, out, that's outrageous. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's, that's low and <laughs> You're right. I mean, and it's, it's, it's unscru 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 unscrupulous. You took the word right out of my mouth. Well, I'll do it, and you'll have a regular gold rush in here, and somebody's going to find that fortune before you do. You wouldn't. No, thirty dollars would protect our secret. Cheaper, twice the price. <laughs> I, I got some. 
I got something here. Here, here, look at this. This is what pack my mama gave me. Look at that. Seventy dollars oh, if oh, it's worth a cent. Mr. Dalrymple. Hmm? Hmm? Try again. Well, uh, well I, I got something here for you. Oh, wait a minute. There you are. Protect yeah. yourself. You better come up with something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey. No, some things is sacred. Here, here, oh. look at that, huh? How about that, huh? What am I gonna do with that? Let's sell it to Miss Lucas. Look good in her dining room. The, the frame alone is worth $5. Yeah. Hmm? Well, losers can't be choosers, as they say. Thank you. Thank you. It's a secret, you know. Shh. Hmm? Uh, how long will it take to complete the arrangements, Mr. Blakely? Well, with a cattle deal of this magnitude, I'd say approximately... Uh, precisely. Three days, Miss Frost. Very well. Fetch the pen, Mr. Blakely. Uh, Miss Frost, this is a rather large transaction. If you would like to examine a few of the specimens of our cattle. Oh, not necessary. It's a man's character that has to stand up under scrutiny. Uh, and may I say that I've heard nothing but good things about the Cartwrights. Thank you. And rest assured, I inquired. I had hoped to meet your two sons before I returned to the East. Was you may still be able to. They're not too far from here. Yeah, they're in Upright. In what? Upright, that's a town. They have a saloon there. Did you... Saloon? Uh, Miss Frost. The impeccable Cartwrights. Traffic in demon rum. <sighs> Miss Frost, the, the boys impulsively went into a, a business venture. Of course, saloons are not on the Cartwright line. Do they, or do they not, own a saloon? Well, very soon, uh, they will not. I've advised them to sell. Did you now? I'll uh, send them a wire in the morning. The telegraph office is open now, sir. You got a buyer? Well, we got a couple of prospects, so put that stove back together again. Mr. Cartwright, sir? May I, may I call you Hoss? Well, I reckon so. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, I am about to impart a secret to you that I have never breathed to another living soul. You got a telegram here for Cartwright? Yo. Thank you. There it is. I'm shut down for the night, so if you answer that, it'll have to wait till morning. That morning will be good enough. No. Uh, meaning no disrespect, but your paw's all wrong. What about what? Oh, this is a good town for two young fellas to start a business in. <laughs> Boss, just got a telegram from Pa. We got to sell this place in quick. All right? Yeah. Wait a few seconds. Well, we ain't selling. Well, can you maintain this schedule if we decide to use the Kansas City stockyards? Well, we'll find that out as soon as we make the first shipment. If, Mr. Cartwright. I beg your pardon? If you make your first shipment. We haven't gone into business with you yet. Well, Miss Frost, let me reassure you. I would like to have you reassure me. There's a telegram for you. Oh, thank you. What I've been waiting for. There's been a uh, slight delay in upright. Better send those boys another wire immediately. Tell them they have 48 hours to divorce themselves from that depraved enterprise. 48 hours. Very good. Mr. Cartwright, I shall want to see the bill of sale. Just listen to me for one Joseph, minute. you can just forget about it now. My mind's made up. I ain't gonna sell. We but ain't God selling this place. He sent us a wire, and he wants us to get out from under this place. Joseph, that was before he knew about the fortune. Oh, the fortune. Now, that's fairy tale talk. There's no fortune in this place. Wait till Dolly Ripple comes in, and you ask him yourself.
Did you say wait till he comes in or wait till he comes to? I'm gonna go get some breakfast. Hunter, pitcher, get out here, you reckon? Look, will you just listen to me? Bill, will you lay off me like I've had some problems? Look, how can you think about it? We've got some problems, you know? Ain't it, lady? I don't want it in here, and keep it out! Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am! Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Telegraph. Thank you. Oh, great, great. Here we go again, huh? From Pop. Imperative, you sell saloon today. Stop. Wire me when sale accomplished. Joe, just do me one favor, will you? Talk to Dollar. Oh. Good morning. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, thank, thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm, I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm, I must have dozed off. <laughs> yeah, you spent the night there, Dolly Ripple. Hey, uh, Tell Joe about the Greeley fortune. The, the Greeley what? It's all right. You can talk to him. He's my brother. Tell him about it. Mr. Cartwright, have you been drinking? No, I ain't been drinking, but I'm getting a mite riled up. Last night, you stood right over there by that stove, and you told me about a fortune that old Greeley had stashed in this here saloon. <laughs> I said that? Yeah, and you said something else. You said he said something very special, that, that that fortune was so close that a man could spit on it. And that's how come you was tearing up that stove, because old Greeley was always sitting there spitting on that stove. How gross. Oh, all right, let's make it short and sweet, Mr. Dalrymple. Is there or isn't there a fortune hidden here someplace? I thought only children believed in fantasies, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, they do. Dalrymple, last night you... I'll go get you a drink. Maybe that'll help you remember. Oh, no, thank you. I've given it up. Good morning, fellas. Well, who's here, the hundred-year-old woman? Now, is that any way to talk to a girl who's going to arrange to take this place off your hands? Keep your money in your pocket, your hand on your billfold, Joe. I'm serious. I ran into my mysterious party. I mean, face to face? And he has authorized me to buy the trails in from you. Well, how come he don't just come out in person and deal with us? Never mind. I, he's a very proper gentleman, and he's very sweet. Yeah, well, why don't you just tell this mysterious, sweet, proper gentleman of yours that if he'll give us $600, we'll give him trails in? Oh, uh, well, what if I could get more than $600? I, I think $600 is plenty. I'll tell you what, now. I'll keep him dangling, and anything over $600, we split 50. Honey, if you can get over $600 for this place, you deserve the money. Ignore first wire, expect sale, and nice profit, Joe. Well, that makes me feel better. <laughs> I guess you're worried for nothing, huh? Well, horses so easily persuaded to get into things, but Joe brings them down to earth. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy, do you think you could ride out to Upright tomorrow, get the bill of sale, and bring it back all on the same day? Sure, Pa. Good boy. Mm. Jebediah, no. where, 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 where was it you said it was, huh? Don't chase after the dollar, Dal Ripple. The man who chases after the dollar never fights. That's it. That's it. <laughs> it's not dollars, no. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's gold. But where, 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 where? Oh, come on. Think, Dal Ripple. Think. Let me see. Let me see. Now, Greeley? Greeley was standing right there. Ever hear the story of the man who was looking for acres of diamonds now, Ripple? Search the world. Search the world. And they were right in his backyard all the time. Right under his feet. Diamonds! That's it, diamonds. Hey, 
Hey, Joe, what is that? Oh, yeah. That's the biggest coach. The noisiest place I ever tried to sleep in. Like the never fell asleep. You alright? Dollar Rumble. This was our staircase until you demolished it. Why did you do that? I'm sorry. I, I apologize, but I don't remember anything. Of course, if I'm responsible in any way, why just just take it out of my salary? Daddy Rebel, we don't pay you no salary. Thanks for the drink. Mm. Ah, it's just what I needed to get my strength back. Drink? Why, that's a six one aboard for you. Now, you go on back to Trail's End. I've got a lot of business to take care of. Mr. Turner? <coughs> what? Mr. Turner? Can I call you Charlie? Call me anything, but just stay on your feet and move along. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I, I got a proposition to make. Now, I want you to buy Trails in and, and make you my partner. I mean, make me your partner. <laughs> Why, of course, Dalrymple. And by the way, uh, what's in it for me? Quar quarter? About quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> quarter of a million... Quarter of a million dollars. Mr. Turner? Mr. Turner, I am about to impart a secret to you that I have never breathed to another living soul. And, and then one night, Mr. Greeley, he says to me, you want to know where the loot is? Just ask. Just ask. Ask who, oh. Dalrymple? Ask who? I can't remember. My head's clearing. I have another drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ask a fat lady, that's what he said. Ask a fat lady. Who's the fat lady? Shh, shh, I know, I know who he meant. It's the woman in the painting over the bar. Now, Ripple, a painting can't talk. I know. But what he meant was the clues in the picture. Get it. Hey. <laughs> settling down and upright. Well, I thought you couldn't wait to be moving on, Ellen, too. <laughs> There's some nice people in this town. What'd you do if you stayed here and not open a saloon, I hear? I might open a restaurant where folks could get a good meal, like veal parmesan and chicken cacciatore and ravioli and European cuisine. Mm. European? <laughs> Them's Italian. Well, Italy's in Europe, isn't it? Well, anyway, it's the only fancy food I know how to cook. I grew up in an Italian neighborhood back east. <clears throat> well, let's get down to business. 
Good. What did you say you wanted for Trails End? Please, just make us an offer. Fourteen hundred. <laughs> well, I... Not good enough, you say? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred? Well, let's not haggle. Sixteen hundred. Six... Now, wait, 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 wait a minute. I want to sue. I mean... Joe, Hoss. Listen, there's a bunch of people over there. They're tearing your saloon apart. What? Well, it seems there's a fortune hit there and everybody's after it. See nothing like it. Money will do to people. Uh, speaking of money, my client still wants to buy this place. And uh, you, you better sell before there isn't anything left to sell. Well, it's fine by me. Sixteen hundred, right, Joe? Right. Joe? What? I say we'll sell for sixteen hundred dollars, right? Wrong. Wrong? Trails End is not for sale at any price. Joseph! Well. I think we've covered every possible contingency. Except for the binding contract. And we know what that is contingent upon. Now, Miss Frost, you saw the telegram for yourself. And Jamie should be here at any time now with the bill of sale. It's a telegram for you, Mr. Cartwright. Well, it was. to ride out to write uh, myself. It's been an unforeseen complication. Mr. Cartwright, unless I have written proof by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning that you and yours no longer own a saloon, we should be disaffiliated. You may go with him, Mr. Blakely. Uh, oh, thank you, Miss Frost. Keep looking, keep looking. Come on, Jamie, get that worried look off your face. You're not in any trouble with Pa. We said come right back with that bill of sale, which I don't have. We ain't sold a place yet. Until we sell it, we can't have a bill of sale. Well, will you stop worrying about Pa's deal with Miss Frost? It's meaningless. How can you compare that with a half a million dollars buried in here someplace? All you gotta do is think. We'll find it. <sighs> Jamie. You've been told about looking at indecent oh, pictures. Hoss, I was just looking for clues. You said the clue was in the picture someplace. Yeah, we'll, we'll look for the clues once you get some sleep. Huh? Oh, come on, Joseph. Wait a minute. I think I've got it. You got what? It's the frame, Joe. That's solid gold, I'll bet. What? Looks like it. Hey, maybe he's got some. I'll be dead, burn right in front of our eyes all the time. That's, that's what Greeley used to say. Thou hast eyes to see, and thou seest not. <laughs> Jamie, boy, I think you struck gold. <laughs> Let's take it to the air, Joe. You bet. Pure gold. Look like gold. I'm sorry. Well, I don't have a sorry as the assayer was when we woke him up in the middle of the night. Well, let's get some sleep. Yeah. Now, I remember, won't you go home? We'll find it the first time.
breakfast and go find Dalrymple and go over this place inch by inch. Hey. What's that? We got half the town out there. Well, I'm not gonna wreck the place this time. against myself. It's not fair. Dar Ripple swore he'd never breathe it to another soul. Hey, where is Dollar Ripple? $8,500. $9,000. $95,000. $10,000. It's not for sale at any price. But wait a minute, we own the place. It's all right, it's all right. I'll cut you in, but but it's, it's mostly mine. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said something about ten thousand dollars. Right. Speak right okay, up, don't be bad. Six? How about five thousand? Anybody? Five thousand? That's, that's a lot of buildings for five thousand. How about four thousand? Even if you throw in the signs and everything. Hi, Paul. Well, it is, Paul. Hi, Paul. It's a long story, Paul. I'm sure it is. How much time do we have left, Mr. Blakely? Less than an hour. I want you to abandon this place, burn it down, give it away. I'm afraid Miss Frost doesn't do business that way. She wants a legitimate bill of sale. There's a te telegraph office down the street if you wanted to maybe send her a telegram. Thank you. Of course, when you think about it, he wasn't very honest either. Said no, I don't want to. He was really pretty sneaky. I think he owes me an apology. Place isn't worth anything, and I could have gotten ten thousand dollars. I don't understand. Frenchy, I'm sorry, but we're closed. I mean, we're closed forever. It's all over. Dollar Rimple. Give him a drink. Give him, give him all he wants. Mm. Jamie, mm. out. Mm. Well, I was just, uh... Out. Wait outside. Excuse me. Uh, don't say anything. I just had a long talk with myself. I should have sold a place when we had a chance. Well, I just hope we didn't blow the deal for Paul with this frost. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid we did. Unless we can find somebody to buy this place. Dally Rample. You're the man that needs to own this saloon. At a real good price, $100. $50? Hmm? We'll own you the money. Mr. Cartwright? Just call me Hoss. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, I'm about to impart a secret to you that I have never breathed to another living soul. Oh. There's just got to be somebody we can... Be careful, there won't be anything left to sell in this place. I'll fix it. Dad, burn it. We got to find somebody who's dumber than we are, Joe. Morning, Mr. Cartwright. You ought to be more careful. Uh, there's a law against messing up the streets around here. Uh, good morning, Sheriff. You're just the man we're looking for. Have you ever thought about going into business for yourself? It's not really as crazy like this. It's, uh, you know, the salon business, Sheriff, it happens to be a wonderful business. People love to drink. Oh, they do it all the time. As a matter of fact, have you been inside this place lately? Yeah, it, it doesn't look great from the outside. Absolutely. Oh, a little here, a little orange, a little hair, a little hair. You're a And when you hired me to buy that saloon, you didn't mention there was a treasure hidden there. Turns out there wasn't. Serves you right. You were trying to swindle the Cartwrights, and me too. But that's why I hired you. You were in jail for swindling. That was different. I was working for myself. I apologize. 
I accept. If I could have five or ten minutes of your time. What for? I want to express my admiration both for you and for a very good idea that you had. Well, it doesn't hurt to listen. What else can I say to you? How are you going to beat the price? Ten dollars. Look at this. Have you just sold a place for fire? Would you double your money? Well, you might be right. You got the deed? You bet I do. I, I like to think on things before I make up my mind. I tell you what, I'll let you know. When? Oh, end of the week. That's right. Yeah, we got a lot of like this last year. Sure. You yeah, got to get this deal while you're yeah, I'll let you know. But you... You know that restaurant we were talking about? Well, it's not now. Will you please? We got problems of our own. You big, big, fat cow. Broke my heart. Hey, hey, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. Hey, hey, hold it. Hey, hold it. Hey, hold it. Hey, hold it. 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 Grazie. French is Italian. You understand what he's saying? Yeah. Hey, ask him a question for me, will you? What? Ask him why he comes in a rat hole like this when there's such a nice place down the street like the Golden Spur. Signore, uh, vuole saper perché no andante al altro salon. Ah, altro quattro posto non c'è un tiziano. He says the other place doesn't have a titian. Oh. What the heck's a titian? Che cosa è Tiziano? Che cosa è Tiziano? Oh, mamma mia! Tu non facci un Tiziano! Da me è il pioggi di oro, è il rado magnifico lavoro di arte in tutto il mondo! That's a Titian, he says it's a rare work of art! Ah, sicuro! But if this is a real work of art, it's worth an awful lot of money! What am I telling you for? Well, maybe it's because you're turning honest. Yeah, but I can't make any money that way. Uh, hey, there's some funny things happening out there on the porch. Yeah, the, n n never mind the porch. Is he, is he sure? Ah, uh, senor. Uh, sei sicuro? <laughs> Ma sicuro, signorina. Credo che io, io, Ernesto Giuseppe Antonio Martinucci Martinelli Sargino, non sacci un tiziano. He's sure. We did it! Hey, Joe! Ha! We're rich! Ha! <laughs> About the porch. Thank you. Um, how, 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 how much is it worth, huh? Quando costa? Ooh. 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 Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the green oh, leaf porch. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it away. Yeah, to me, and I threw it away. Oh, somebody hit me with hey. a stick. Hey, Jamie. Jamie, come here. Come here. Come here. Hey, uh, what about the porch? Never mind the porch. Take a look at that picture and get some culture in you, boy. Is the, the naked lady famous? <laughs> Have some respect, Jamie. Not only is she famous, she's a piece of art. Guardi la faccia, che bello, eh? La faccia, le mani, e le linee, tutte. What's he saying? It don't make no difference. You just pay attention. Ah, salute, Tiziano. Salute, da me. Mr. Cartwright, you've got four minutes to sell your property. If I'm not mistaken, that's the titian that was stolen on its way to the San Francisco Art Museum. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright, but if this here's stolen property, I'll have to take care of it. Two minutes. You just have to express my regrets to Miss Frost. Fellas? Fellas. Not now, Ellen Sue. Not listen, now. Listen, listen. We want to buy the Sold. Shade. We're opening a restaurant. 
Yeah, veal parmesan and chicken cacciatore and ravioli. Never mind the menu. We're offering two hundred dollars. He meant twenty-five dollars. Sold. Give her the deed. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's it. You still had forty-five seconds left. Told you we wouldn't let you down. Didn't take long to get the whole story. This here painting was hijacked on its way to the San Francisco Art Museum. Been missing near 10 years now. I still can't believe it's worth all that money. One doesn't think of art in terms of money, Mrs. Lucas. Oh, goodbye, fat lady. Oh. Take a good look, Jamie. You may never get a chance to see another great work of art like that. C could you tell me something, Haas? Well, I ain't no expert, but I can try. What? Well, I was just wondering, um, why is it that I couldn't look at the naked lady when she was just a naked lady, and now all of a sudden I can because she's a great work of art? Well, that's, that's simple, Jamie, because you see, it's with a... Hey, Joe, explain that to him, will you? Uh, oh, well, it's, uh, it's simple. When, when you put uh, something on, on, uh, on a kit on... You're, you're his father, why don't you tell him? Well, uh, hey, Jamie, it's... Uh... Frenchy. Dio. Questo ragazzo non sa di zanno? Ehi, mamma mia, ma che... Beh, questo ragazzo è il cliente di piano. Sono una... Lame. Somebody's running him into the ground. Man must have been in a hurry. Maybe we better try to find out why. I'd find somebody. The handcuffs. I'm not trying to hide them. I'm looking for help. What kind of help? It's not for me. It's for the fellow who put these on me. He's back there about three miles hurt. Why did you stay with him? Because he had a gun in his hand. I figured he was about to kill me. Now, who's this who's about to kill you? Morehouse, Sheriff Clyde Morehouse. I didn't say he was about to kill me. I said I figured he was. I could have been wrong. But if I stayed there, I could have been dead, too. 
Yes, sir. Now, I, I was his prisoner. But he put these cuffs on the wrong man. Crossed my heart and hoped to die. <laughs> it's a fine resolution. I reckon he figured I was trying to escape. Joe, why don't you ride back and have a look? You sure tell him Hank sent you. I'd call that one for the history books. A prisoner sending help to a sheriff that's been on the hanging him. I thought I was running plumb out of luck. You got him safe, have you? You bet we do. Well, I stepped my gopher hole, broke his leg. Throwed me something fierce. Well, I knew what had happened, why well, he'd have hightailed it. And what'd this fella do? Well, he and a couple of his friends was helping themselves to bank money. Last month, when they held up a stage, killed a driver, robbed all the passengers, and took off. Yes, sir. You caught yourself a real sweetheart. That sounds like it. Let's get you back to camp. Think you can ride? I reckon so. All right, come on. I'll give you a hand. Oh. Right, take it slow. Oh. I'm saying, what are you going to part this with today? Ah, much holy thing. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Here he is. He's pretty stove out. Watch his leg. Yeah. Easy does it. There we go. Yeah, sure. Yes, Howdy. And I looked at the stars in the sky. I wondered if ever a cowboy would drift to that sweet by and by. You try taking off like that again, I'm gonna put a bullet in you. I was just going for help. It's like I told these folks. Yeah. And guess what you told them folks? Then I stopped you, you'd be fetched up somewhere in Mexico. Who'd I thank here? Ben Cartwright, Sheriff. My son Hoss over here. Howdy, Sheriff. Much obliged to your son there, Mr. Cartwright. But I got another favor to ask of you. Sheriff, you look as if you could use a doctor. You sure do, Clyde. Mr. Cartwright, if you just strap me up real tight, well, I'll be on my way with him, but I'm gonna have to ask you for the loan of a horse and saddle. Of course, of course. Have much of a case against him? Well, I have all witness. Passengers he robbed. When they see me, they're gonna tell you, too bad you got the wrong Hank Simmons. Well, if that, if that happens, I'll let you go. Till then, I'm not letting you out of my sight. Huh. Oh. Yeah, I think I could use that strapping up right now. Get the bandage box up, Simon. They say there will be a great judgment, and cowboys like doggies will stand. Now, let breath out, please. <sighs> oh, easy. I won't be able to breathe at all. Exactly what bandage is for, so you'll not breathe too hard and hurt the rib. When you get to Cottonwood, you see the doctor, and you tell Dr. Hobson is do good job. Thank you. All I can say is I'm plumb out of wind. Good. Oh. Bandage is success. Oh. I'd feel a whole lot easier if you were to stay on here, Sheriff. We can take care of Simmons. I'll feel a whole lot easier when I get him behind bars. If I can get him there. Sheriff, how you feeling? <laughs> well, I tell you, I've been talking awful sassy, but I got to admit, I, I don't feel sassy. I've been thinking, wonder if one of you folks would ride along with me. Well, I suppose I could. Yes, of course. I figure two days going, one day coming back. You'll get deputy pay. 
No need for that. I'll saddle my horse. You'll get it. Are you really that scared of me, Clyde? Well, I'm careful of loaded guns and rattlesnakes. If you give me any more lip, I'm going to tie you to that saddle. I'll tell you, it's a sad business when people don't trust each other. I need to see what you do to a real wicked man. Mr. Cartwright, I want to thank you once again for all your kindness. I am unwelcome. Everything you've done for me. Hey, I... All right, let's ride. And I want to thank you, too, Mr. Cartwright, for your hospitality. The accommodations were too good, but the child board made up for it. Roll on, long little doggies. Roll on, roll on. This is real pretty country. What's been mine in California? You ever been to California, Joe? Yep. Joe, I got to warn you. This fella here could talk the stinger right out of a bee. <laughs> He'll be poking and prying, trying to find your weak spots. He'll try to trick you, catch you off guard, jump you when he does. You're just suspicious, Clyde. Now, I'm going to settle down there. If I put some money together, I'm Stockton Way, raised blooded cattle. Yeah, I've been reading up on it. I'm going to be a cowhand all my life. Assuming you have a life. <laughs> Assuming. That's a good word. You do much reading, Joe? Yeah, fair amount. Yeah, same with me. I like learning things. Never had any real schooling. Kicks around too much for it. But you may have noticed I taught myself reading and writing. And how to speak proper. <laughs> proper, properly. Taught myself a lot of things. Yeah, such as wool pulling. I found I'm smarter than most people. <laughs> Roll on, roll on, roll on, little doggy. Roll on, roll on, roll on, roll on. You know something? I grew up in these hills, that's a fact. Lived with a Mexican family about 10 miles east of here. They didn't have much, but they treated me like one of their own. I never had any family that I can remember. Well, I... What's a woman? I called her Aunt B. I remember her. Must have been about five, maybe six. Kept running away from her. She was mean. And there was another family that took me in. A school teacher boarded with them. She started me reading. But I didn't stay with them either. I don't remember why. Yes, sir. Sheriff, you're taking me right back into home country. I got a lot of friends around here. Why don't you help him, Joe? I don't need help. You look about done in. I'll bet them ribs are burning like fire, aren't they? You know, you want to be careful, Sheriff. You could puncture a lung. I had a friend once who did that. Drowned in his own blood. Yeah, hey, come on, knock it off. Well, doesn't it bother you to see a man suffering like that? It hurts me. Just look at him. And for what? We can look like a fool at the end. You aiming to rile me, you have. You shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you permanent. You just remember I don't have to take you back alive. Take the first watch, will you, Joe? I would take it, but I got to ease this pain a bit. Take Wendy here over there to that tree and cuff him around it. Let's go. It's pain making him fretful. You got to understand that, Joe. Okay, that's far enough. I guess he's worried, too, not knowing which Simmons I am. On the ground, put your hands around the tree. Oh, especially since we're so close to home country. Must be thinking about the Mexican family and all them friends I have around here. I wouldn't be surprised if they're 
watching us right now, figuring I'm doing something. Oh, yeah! Think about it, Aka! <laughs> Just fool him. If he does that again, knock him out! <laughs> Can't you fellas take a joke? I feel sorry for you. I truly do. You're more prisoners around here than I am. I've got nothing to worry about. I just go to sleep. But you gotta stay awake. You gotta jump every time I move. And every time you hear something out there in the night. And tomorrow it'll be worse. <laughs> I'm afraid I will be a stray cowboy, a maverick unbranded on high, and get in the trouble at dawning when the boss of the riders goes by. Roll on, roll on, roll on, little doggy, roll on, roll on. <laughs>
bedroom? Maria? What's happened here? Where's your papa? Where's, where's Pepe? My father is dead. Pepe, go. Maria. Maria! How long has she been like this? Two, three days. I think she might die. You got any food? Not for a long time. I tried, but I am sick. I don't mean that. You got any food in the house? See. Si. Please, you help. some water. Get my sister some water. This morning, your sister. Yes, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Bet you that makes you feel a lot better, doesn't it? You don't remember me, do you? You weren't no bigger than a chicken the last time I was here. Your papa had uh, some horses and a couple of cows, and they gone. You know, I used to live here when I was your age. That's a fact. When did your papa die? Last week. Same sickness as you and your sister? No. That's a shame. I was counting on him for something. Yeah. yeah. Listen, you know what you need? You need some food in you. But you get some food in you, you're going to feel all right. And I'm going to fix you some. Now I want you to pay close attention. I made arrangements to meet somebody here. See, I'm a sheriff. And he's one of my deputies. And we're after this real bad man. You understand? Entiendes? I planned I'd signal him when I got here. And after I fix you that grub, I'm gonna build a fire, a big smoky one. And I want you to promise me to keep it going after I leave. Night and day till he gets here. You think you could do that? I don't know. Why, well, sure you can. You're a big boy, Pedro. His name's Yancey. Tommy Yancey. You remember him? He's been around here. See, si. I know him. You tell him that Hank will see him in Mexicali. Think you can remember that? You helped Maria. Well, I, I can't do anything for her right now. But I'll send somebody from town. I promise. All right? That's my boy. Now let's get you that grub.
There you go, buddy. Uh, think you can feed yourself? I'm gonna cut some brush for that fire. Now, you need anything, you just yell. Gracias. De nada. Didn't get you, huh? Drop it. <laughs> Pedro, kill him. Now you get up. Walk towards that cabin. Still can't take a joke. Pedro uh. Maria! Cuidado. El bandido que busca. A little jumpy, aren't you? Why don't you go ahead and shoot him? You might just as well. He's half dead of the fever and his sister ain't no better. They ain't eaten for three or four days. Well, what are we waiting for? Why don't you take me on into Cottonwood, deputy? Saying that because it's the truth, or because he wants you to say so. Look, I'm just trying to help you. That's all. Don't believe him, Pedro. He's lying. He don't want to help you. Nearest neighbor's a good day's ride off. There's a doctor in Cottonwood now. If you wouldn't get there before tomorrow, it'd be a good day bringing him back here. The girl could be dead by then. Boy, along with her. What I was planning to do, I was going to kill one of them chickens out there and pick some greens and fix up a good soup and hand feed her the broth. What's the matter, Joe? Don't you believe me? I believe what I say. You think I'm lying about what I was planning to do? Or maybe I'm lying about the nearest neighbor. I told you I had a lot of friends around here. One of the others got to be lying and reading your mind. <laughs> sure I am. You're wondering why I want you to stay here. Whether I'm putting off a showdown in Cottonwood or because I expect my friends to come and get me. Right? Oh, you know, there's one way I can make sure you don't get away. <laughs> Not you. You wouldn't shoot a man down in cold blood. Now, you're all tied up with what's right and wrong. Now, don't you push me too far. Hey, you see, you got them principles, Joe. And I won't let you do things. That's the difference between you and me. I've got none. I can just do anything I want to. I don't care who gets hurt. I know that. I'll tell you something you don't know. I got ways of making people do what I want. Help. <laughs> I told you, you're signaling my friends for me. I made you do that. What's the matter, Hank? Not too sure on my principles right now. Yeah, 
It's all right, Pedro. Yeah, he's just having a little fun shooting at me. He's lying to you. I was just signaling for help. Go on back to bed. Everything's all right. You do what he tells you, Pedro. He'll shoot you if you don't. If you don't try to outsmart me, Joe. You know, I'm sick of listening to your big mouth. <laughs> I'll sing me your favorite song. Sister's better, her fever's down. She wakes up, she's probably gonna want some of that soup. Yeah, that's right, I'm not too bad to cook. ¿Qué quieres? ¿La mordaza? Tells you. We don't want him to hit you again. Pedrito, estás bien? Got yourself another enemy, Joe. signal fire going. Make it real easy for my friends to find me. Boy, hates you. Maria saw what you did to him. She hates you, too. They're going to set me free. Or my friends will. Maria and me are just sweethearts. You didn't know that, did you? She'll do anything I want. Won't you, Maria? Three enemies in here. Gotta sleep sometime, too, Joe. Little tired? Yeah, I'm tired. If you try anything, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm not gonna kill you, just shoot you in your leg and break it. I do believe you mean that. I do. Well, see what you're doing to yourself, Joe? None of this would have happened if you stayed with that roundup, minded your own business. That's the meddling, that's what comes of it. 
destroys a man's character. I'll live with it. Well, you go ahead and get some sleep, because I ain't gonna do nothing. I don't have to. They're gonna do it for me. es un oficial. Me mostró a mí su insignia. Dice que el otro es un bandido. I don't want you speaking Spanish. I don't know what you're saying. It makes me think you're planning something I won't like. You speak English. I told you not to speak Spanish. You speak English. Look, I just want you to know that you have no reason to be afraid of me. Hank's my prisoner. I'm acting as a sheriff's deputy. Do you understand that? Hank's wanted for robbery and murder. We were taking him back to Cottonwood to stand trial. He killed the sheriff and he got away. I followed him here. He says he's got a friend who's going to meet him here. I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. You two are sick and I couldn't leave you. I don't know if you believe me, but it's the truth. He hit you. Because I helped Hank. And the knife. I took it to cut the ropes. you to stay in here. I don't want to see you in the kitchen. I'm going to go outside and put some more wood on that fire. He'll bring his friend. Yeah, that's what Hank keeps saying. I have to have help. I'm just going to have to hope he's lying. Why don't you be sensible? There's no need for you to get yourself killed just because you told the sheriff you'd help. Let me go. Your troubles will be over. I'll write out of here to never see me again. You better let me go. Because I'm going to get out of here one way or the other. And when I'm out of here, you... Don't! You'll know it when I'm out of here. You'll know it! You stubborn bigot!
Yancey? Yes, there's a man in here with a gun on me! He's going to the bedroom, Yancey! I'm by the front door! I'm tied by the front door! Joe, why don't you walk out there in the fire and see if it's your friends or mine? Go ahead, Cartwright. Walk out there. He's still in the bedroom, Yancey! Still in the bedroom! Go on, Joe. You should have taken the deal, shouldn't you? You should have listened to me. You should have taken the deal. Still in the bedroom, Yancey! Your brother's outside. He cut Hank loose. Now, you go get your horse. I can keep him pinned down till you get saddled up. I ain't ready to leave here just yet. I got him right where I want him. Take all the horses. Then let him try it. I can't leave my sister in there. That's right. You can't leave your sister in there with him. Pedro. You do what I tell you. Both of you can ride out of here with us, right, Yancey? That's right, boy. Uh-huh. Like that. Now, go over and stand by the fire where we can see you. No. Well, he ain't gonna hurt you. You're the last person in the world he wants to hurt. Go on. Get it! You want to help your sister, don't you? Go on. All right. Come on out and see what I got for you. See what all your clean living righteousness got for you, Joe. Should have shot me when you had the chance. But you couldn't do it, could you? You couldn't kill a man in cold blood. That's why I got it over you. You got principles, but I ain't. I can do anything I want to. Did you get the idea, Joe? Throw your gun out! I mean, now! What does he do to Pedro? He's not going to hurt you, brother. I'm losing patience, Joe. You throw that gun out and you come out after it. Now throw it out! <laughs> oh, get him up. I got lots of plans for you, Joe. I'm going to give you a nice, cool drink at the end of that well rope. What about the boy and the woman?
You got three enemies now. I left you the extra horse. I figured you might be able to use it. Gracias. Pedro? Take care of your sister now, you? Adios. 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 